Hi, this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have two very special guests today. They are wonderful. They are the owners of Carmen's Little Leaders, and they are also on our podcast channel. They have their own podcast, and they talk about parenting. And they talk about a lot of important issues on how to parent your child, different ways to improve your family life, and different ways to improve your life with your child and make your child be the best they could possibly be. Now today, they're going to talk about, it's a great topic. I love it. It's about, do we praise our children for, uh, for, to, for, for purpose or do we praise our children for effort? And I think it's a great topic because it's something that's not talked about. And it's also, you know, do we, do we praise our children for, for purpose or do we praise our children for the effort? So today we're going to find out. They have a lot of great information to share and they're going to share it with us today. I'm very excited. And before we go, I just want to give a quick shout out to our sponsors and it's the, the Happy Wellness Expo in Livingston, New Jersey. They're going to be doing a huge expo. It's uh, People are coming nationwide, and it's going to be all about natural products. They'll have doctors, coaches there, people from all over. They'll have exhibitors, and they'll have also people coming to see the expo. So it'll be in the description box. So look at it. Give it give it a, a visit, visit them and give them a call if you're interested in participating as an exhibitor. So, you know, I'm so excited to have both of you here. You guys are great. I love you both. You know, Tell people, you know, in case they haven't seen your previous um, your previous podcast, tell them a little about each of yourselves and what you do and about, about Carmen's Little Leaders, and then we'll get into the topic. Thank you, Stacey. Yeah, my name is Audra Karam, and, um, you know, my background has been in working with children. Uh, we have four children of our own, and I have loved working with children and being a part of their growth. And um, so we did the martial arts, and we've been in businesses together for the years. Um, but yeah, we are so passionate about our most recent mich- mission, excuse me, which is, you know, helping kids become leaders, helping good kids become great kids. And uh, so that's a little bit about me. Well, Stacy, thank you. We love your show. And thank you so much for allowing us to join you. Um, we think what you do is incredible. So <clears throat> my name is Matthew Karam. And we have, uh, Audra and I are on a similar mission of really helping these children be the best they can be in their lifetime. And so our program that we do offer is in character and leadership development for pre-K through uh, nine years old. And so those kids are the ones that we're looking at as our next generational leaders and how we can how can we support them to be the best they can be and so that's our mission and that's our goal and so it really challenges some of the things that we were brought up with and raised right. with mm-hmm. and and you know the ways we see things happening now so that's a big big issue and i yeah and i think a thing that's really important for both of us that we've learned through the years is is um it's traditional values you know getting back to those traditional things that we all know are important um to to help our children be successful sure that's important and it does take a village it takes a lot of folks to work you know together to get these children raised to be happy healthy strong independent uh members of society that do contribute and and add value and so um yeah we're and, yeah and as you mentioned our topic today what we'd like to kind of just um bring up to discuss a little bit more is you know when we praise our kids when we say good things to them um it's it's interesting to know what we say and how we say it is so powerful because um you know we've learned that when we praise on their performance it can kind of backfire on us um, as opposed to praising another way. So we want to talk about that a little bit. So So, uh, one of the things we wanted to share today is we read an article that was published in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology back in 1998. And the heading of the article says, praise for intelligence can undermine children's motivation and performance. Whoa. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) I was like, wow. Wow. We better read this. I hate it. <laughs> it's kind of shocking. And so when you read, they, they conducted six different independent studies. And one of the things that they really uh, brought home was 85% of the parents in, actually raised their children by rewarding their performance. Okay. And right. so meaning uh, maybe when we were younger, let's say, so to speak, if I'm playing basketball and I'm on the team, 
if we win, then we get pizza type of a thing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. <laughs> and so that was something that was just kind of a given. And we never really thought about it. And, you know, um, and when we look back, uh, it seems like uh, we parented our children one way, so to speak, and we parented the children in our martial arts school a little differently, believe it or not. And no one really ever, I, I want to say called me out on it, but you know what I mean? I, I never identified the difference. Yeah, I don't, you know, in all fairness, I don't think it was a, a, a known um, consideration because right. we whenever we do praise as parents, right? We, we give, we do it out of the goodness of our hearts. There is no right. maliciousness. There is no agenda. It's, and we do a lot of what we heard was maybe offered to us, you know, great work. Yeah. Well done. Way to go. Super excellent. You know, yeah. um, but go ahead. Well, I, when I was being raised, I really didn't get much praise at all, truthfully, personally, from my parents, right? Yeah. The, the only thing I heard was you didn't do that right. Or, <laughs> this was wrong. Right. You mm -hmm. know? And Very so, true. yeah, there wasn't much praise being spread around at yeah, all. Right, right. Truthfully, it was you just know, an expectation. Yes. Um, and, that expectation and I, true. Yeah. yeah. And like you had said, you know, we, we all just kind of put that expectation on ourselves. I, I need to do better and it, you can always improve. Right. And, yeah. and I don't know that our, this generation is feeling that way. <laughs> Even really? when I went to um, when I went to college, I remember my father. He was from Greece. He had this big, deep Greek accent, and I was the only child. So he said to me, "I pay for your college." And he goes, "But you don't. You screw up, and that's it." And then he went like this with his hands, and I was like, "Okay." Yes, <laughs> I left off for college. You know. Yeah. And you knew he meant it. <laughs> he meant it. Yes. <laughs> right. Message received. Right. <laughs> Yeah, there was no gray area. Yeah. He was very clear yeah. on what he was, his position. And and I think that's awesome. You know, um, you know, one of the things that shocked me in reading this article was um, it seems like in both groups, whether you were uh, rewarding for performance or effort, when there was a good outcome, the results were OK. They, there really wasn't a big difference. OK, right. if you did effort or performance, they, they turned out well because the outcome turned out well. What they learned in the study that made a tremendous difference was when the performance was under or poor, it wasn't what they expected or want, what they wanted to have happen. And so when you say to a child, hey, if you get all A's on this report card, <clears throat> then we're going to whatever, right? Um, I'd like to give you kind of an example of when I was a child. Mm -hmm. um, I was in third grade and um, I remember this to a T. I was in a parochial school. Um, and so uh, my dad traveled a lot at that time. And so he put a note by my bed stand that said, because uh, he was already gone by the time I woke up, it said, if you get all A's on your next report card, you get $1. OK, and I was so excited. You know, I was yeah. a good student generally. And, right. you know, that mm -hmm. that it motivated me. And and so um, I you know, it was kind of funny, though. But uh, so the next report card comes around. Of course, dad's not there, but I get all A's. I run home to mom. I'm so excited. And mom's like, well, you have to take that up with your dad. You know, I don't I don't do that. And he's not mm -hmm. here. You have to wait two days till he comes home. And so I did. And the long I'm sure, you know, I show it to him and. You know, I never forgot it. He says, uh, I don't remember doing that. Oh, my goodness. Letter. <laughs> and, and I'm like, what do you mean? So here, the... Here's the life lessons. So keep going. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So I I was, you know, kind of devastated by that, you know, and um, <laughs> I'm like, wait a minute. I did all this work and I, I got nothing and all that. Um, and then two weeks later at our because we had a small pro between grades, let's say kindergarten and uh, sixth grade, there were only a hundred students all in the whole school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and so uh, they had a new teacher come in that could offer a new art class yeah. just because of her experience in her past. So they were asking kids, Hey, do you want to do that? Well, right. believe it or not, I, I liked art, but yeah. I was horrible at it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw me draw something, you wouldn't even know what it was. And um you know, so I declined joining the art class because I knew if I didn't get all A's next time that I couldn't get the dollar. So I didn't do it. Uh. And so it held me back in my 
fun in yeah. my development. Well, and just opportunity. Willing yeah. to try new mm-hmm. things yeah. because if I didn't get all A's, I didn't get a dollar, you know? Right. And so that made me reflect back thinking about, okay, now I'm starting to see, it did affect me some, right. um, you know, that, that I never even had thought of before yeah. Uh, yeah. because I knew, you know, and so, you know, it, it, uh, it, it explains now why, um, you hold on all to all the paper he gets in the home. So <laughs> it did. I subconsciously then from then on, I mean, everything I have proof from 20 years ago. <laughs> and, and my dad taught me that without even really, doing, maybe doing it on purpose, yeah. you know, and that. And so and we, we see today that the big push for parents is how do we create resilience Right. And how do we create grit in our children? Right. Right. Uh, because yeah, I, I don't know if if uh, most of your listeners know this, but um, the they find that the number one indicator of success for children is resilience and grit. Mm-hmm. So if you're hoping for your child to be successful, you need to help them build that. Um, and, and how do you do that? Yeah. And right, right. And so how do we do that? And this it speaks to that, like. One of the one of the mistakes, so to say, um, is that you know we may be giving praise inappropriately. Uh, that's doing not more harm than good, right? But we want to think about it. You know, we want to make sure that we're cognizant of the words we say. And there's nothing wrong. I know. I guess we all want to make sure there's nothing wrong with saying that a boy. Yeah. Work, job well done. Um, but we just want to raise um, awareness to say. Yeah. You know, think about what you say and how you say it. So go ahead and I'm so, to share more on that. Yeah. So I guess the the article that, that really got us to reflect on was when there is a bad outcome, if you're rewarding for performance, what it leads a child to do is say, okay, I'm not as good as I thought I was. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm not as smart or as intelligent as I thought I was. And there's kids out there that are smarter than I am. And and so what you find is those children start to uh, be unwilling to try new things. Right. They won't take on those new missions, uh, new thing, because they want to be the smartest. Right. right. And so they really start to limit what they do. And and the the sad part is there may be things in their life that they really would enjoy, like me taking an art class. Yeah. But they don't. Right. Yeah. Um, right. It comes down to that fear of failure. It is. Like, yeah. yeah. Fear. That's one of the biggest things in a nation is fear of failure. That's why people don't move on because they they fear failure, and that's that is one of the main reasons people don't move forward in life. Yeah. No, exactly. Good point. Yeah. And we and we learn to when you're resilient and you have to kind of stare that failure, that fear in the face. Right. Yeah. And, um, and say, you know, what's what's the worst that can happen? Right. Um, right. If we're not raising our children to think that way, then we're limiting them. Right. So, right. So when you have a child that you reward for effort mm-hmm. and there is a bad outcome or an uh, under expected outcome, so to speak, right. that child learns if I put more effort in, then I can accomplish that goal. Right. right? Mm-hmm. I can make the mark. And even though it didn't happen the first time. So that's where if we want to develop resilience and grit in our children, if we reward for effort, now they understand it's okay to not make the mark the first time. Yeah. Right. You know, it's okay that I have to put more effort in. Right. And when I do, then I can get a good outcome. Yeah. And then, you know, they find that this encourages them to keep trying. Right. Yeah. Motivation. It increases their motivation tremendously, yeah. which is so important. And ultimately, it increases their performance. Yeah. Because no one, I mean, if we think about uh, Albert Einstein, you know, or any of these huge people that were inventors, you know, when they were talking about the light bulb, you know, everyone focuses on how many times he had to try. If he yeah. tried the first one and it didn't work, Right. We wouldn't even have them today, you know, um, exactly. but he just kept saying, I'm that one step closer. Right. Yep. Yeah. And I th- it was funny. We just recently heard, um, and I think you might've even shared it, that uh, he was actually afraid of the dark is the whole reason that 
the light bulb <laughs> was invented, mm -hmm. which I did not know. And I think that's fascinating. I didn't know that but, either. Yeah. But yeah, you just keep on trying. And um, and yeah, his wasn't like a stare fear in the face, you know, like getting up to publicly speak or something. Mm -hmm. um, but, but yeah, he's okay. I screwed up. I messed up. What's what's the worst that can happen? Well, I'm going to learn. Yeah. And so there's, there's so much resilience built. Uh, and then that persistence when we um, encourage our children. So when we say words like, I love how you stuck with that, yeah. I think is better than, oh, it looks great. You know, I love how you stuck with it when it got tough for you. And if right. we start using that language, I think we can help our kids um, know that we're not going to get it perfect every time. Yeah. Uh, so, and so that's a, a piece that I think is important to pick up. If I were a young parent, that would be something I would want to change in how I gave that praise or recognize my children. Right. We knew, just like in our martial arts school, that if we taught a new skill, um, let's say as an example, maybe how to break a board. Right. Uh, we expected those children not to be able to do it the first time. Yeah. <laughs> it took practice. Oh, you know? yeah. You know, and so in our martial arts school, we did a tremendous job of focusing on the effort they were putting forward. Right. And you could see if they had practiced or not. Right. Oh, and, yeah. And they were working on it, you know. Right. Um, and and the, that support and that uplifting of them, um, you know, the only time we had trouble in that environment is if mom or dad <laughs> didn't support the effort. Yeah. Okay. You know, sometimes dad, you know, would be, uh, you know, you gotta, and you know, and that type of a thing. And, um, you know, the, I had one dad that was given their daughter a hard time. Yeah. Um, and I said, dad, let's have you come out and try it. <laughs> he tried it and he couldn't break it. <laughs> okay. So that really changed his attitude. <laughs> that was a great idea for his daughter, you know, and because I kept telling him, it's really hard. It's going to take her time. Mm -hmm. It's an expected three month goal. It's yeah. not the next day. Right. And, um, you know, but he wouldn't drop it. You know, he wouldn't support her. And, yeah, uh, and, and you know, not it, and it, we didn't do this to embarrass him or anything, but uh, the, the child was just really struggling. Her confidence was feeling less and less because dad wasn't believing in her. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. yeah. He, he And so we saw that being, you know, a conflict of uh, interest in us trying to help raise her up. And yeah. Uh, so, yeah, he, he was a great sport about it and, you know, kind of laughed it off. But I think it was a great learning lesson for him. Uh, for their yeah. household. Yeah. Yeah. For their household. You know, it really changed how dad interacted with her. And then he started supporting her effort. Right. Which they saw tremendous improvement, not only in her grades, yeah. but what she was willing to do. She right. before uh, she liked to swim, but she wasn't the best. And when mm -hmm. they would go places, she wouldn't swim, you know? Yeah. After that, she started, okay, let's go swimming. And was she yeah. a great swimmer? No, but right. she had fun. Yeah, opens yeah. up opportunities. And, you know, we're not sitting here saying because uh, the this is how you know we did it because we made the mistakes as well. I oh, did, yeah. As you know, all you as parents, I did. Right, yes. there's plenty of them, and so we say learn from this and take yeah. hold of this, you know, because it's just it's available. But um, yeah, and then you know, as we mentioned earlier in our conversation, um, Matt and Nora I were really praised and no no reflection on our parents because we thought they all did a great job. But yeah, um, it was just do this you're expected and we found a way to do it. Right. Right. Um, yeah. yeah. So there's been a shift in all of that. And, um, and I think it's just interesting to know because we, we want to help these kids be successful. We see that these kids are struggling. Mm -hmm. They're they're They don't have that self-confidence yeah. that our generation, I think had. Right. right. Oh, for sure. They, if you give them a challenge, it was so many of them just collapse. Yeah. They fall apart. Right. Yeah. I why? think I'll I'll tell you why because I noticed from from watching my my family members and friends who have younger children, this generation hovers over their children. They're very overprotective. They do wow. everything for their children, and there is no I don't I see a lack of discipline in many many of the families that I I, I have viewed, and I I feel like one. 
if if you can't you you have to be in the background like when you have a when you have a child think of it as laying an egg the bird comes out and then you take care of the bird as their baby and then you'll start to see them let their they will teach the bird everything it needs to know and then they will let the bird fly and when it when it comes to you know i'll give you an example like my when i when i had to do things there was plenty of times growing up where I fell. Now my father would not run and pick me up right away. He would let me fall and I yes. would have to get myself up. But if I couldn't get myself up, then he jumped yes. in and helped me. Yeah. But wow. he gave me the opportunity to oh. do it on my own and made it look like I ha like he wasn't going to help me. And then if I couldn't do it, he was right there for me. Yes. But I had to get myself up first. Now yes. I see in this generation they they are hovering over their children they are so overprotective they don't let their children go places and do things and they're paranoid about a lot of different things so these children you know they live in an environment where mom and dad are doing everything for them well how are they going to learn mm -hmm. how are these children going to learn if you're doing everything for them and if you're not giving these children discipline how are they going to know how to behave mm -hmm. i went to a restaurant with friends and their children and their children were jumping all over the tables and, and grabbing forks and spoons. And I Ooh. looked at one of the moms and the mom didn't do anything. I went over oh and God. I said, you cannot do this. We're in a restaurant. I said, do not touch the forks. Do not touch anything on the table. These are not your tables. And you cannot, if you're not going to sit down, you can't touch any of the utensils. Can yeah. you please stand with us? Mm -hmm. And oh, wow. the child came back. But- yeah. It's not my duty, but I couldn't take it anymore. I was like, I you know, because I sure. wasn't part of that group. And I was like, I have to admit, I got a little embarrassed, you know, right. It wasn't my child, you know? Mm -hmm. So you really, when it's not your child, you really, you, it's, it's, there's a fine line of what you can do and what you can say. So, sure. but I yeah. got to the point when I kept watching, I was like, oh my goodness, but this is this is why you know you have to teach your child right and wrong and you have to give your child consequences it doesn't mean you have to be terrible consequences but little consequences maybe right. they like a certain video game well you know for tomorrow you know and the next day because you did x and y you're not going to be able to use it and then you give it back to them right. so they know in their head oh god if i do that again or if i do something bad mom mm -hmm. and dad are going to take my video game away for one or two days Right. And it's little things like that, that kind of like mold a child, you know, and then you, you know, and I, I you know, I, I think that was the difference, you know, and, you know, I don't think you should go to the extreme when you're disciplining your children as they grow up, just little things, little things right. can make a big difference. But I, I'll go ahead. Uh, no, I was going to say, I think a good point, because they, um, a lot of parents are afraid to parent anymore, which is, you know, discipline. But, um, you know, I think a, a helpful thing that that might be good for some of your listeners is to understand, like, um, if you want to avoid that situation, like if because parents will come out and say, I'm so embarrassed of how they behave. Why do our kids act like this? And I remember when our children were young and I think you have to set the expectation. I know before we yes. ever went into a store, you know, like I said, we've had four little ones and five and under, mm -hmm. um, but you set the expectation. So as we're all, before everybody gets unbuckled in the car, okay, now, and we're parking. Now, remember, we're going in the store. When we get out, you stand on the line, hands on the cart and just, you know, and it's not, it's not militant. It's just, no. It's a game plan for your team, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> We're a team and we need a plan. Exactly. And so I think I think when we would elevate that expectation to help our children know, to help them be successful, we set them up for success, right? If I didn't have that conversation before we went in, then I leave it to them to make that decision is what my mistake would have been. And I, and I knew that was too risky because I didn't know how it would come out. But I think to help parents now who may, may be listening and are struggling with like, okay, that's all well and good, Stacey. I, I want my child not to do that. Well, well, before we go into the restaurant, we might want to say, stay right by mom and dad, you know, or make sure you stand in line when we're in line. And it, and it, kids figure that out. Um, kids and, are smart. And they model your behavior too, but you oh, have, yeah. you, can't, you have to keep them in tow. You have to keep them beside you. And when they, their natural tendency is to be curious, their natural, you know, they want to learn about the world, but if we don't kind of help them figure out how to do that, um, 
in a socially acceptable way, <laughs> then it backfires. And, and we, we have to be really aware of that, I think. The hard part, I think, too, Stacey, about the story you shared is that mom clearly was disengaged. Yeah. She, she it's it's her job as a parent right to help guide her children on how to act yes what's acceptable in public mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it doesn't just happen these kids don't just figure it out no you have to teach them <laughs> you know? right yeah any skill we want to learn you have to teach them you have to and, teach and, them yes you know and i you know let's say my dad might have had a strong hand when i was getting raised mm -hmm. but i knew he loved me right, right? And he taught me manners and he taught me to be respectful of people. Yes. And he showed you, you have to do these things, right? Yes. And that was the value of being taught by your parents. Yeah. The right way, you know, mm -hmm. and I remember my mom and dad, I'm the oldest of six children. And I remember my mom and dad would give compliments to other parents would tell them your children are well-behaved and then, right. you know, those kind of things. I would hear those things as being the oldest. Um, and truthfully, I never thought about it when I was a child, um, but I can tell you when I thought of, about it when I was a parent, Right. <laughs> I wanted those same compliments for my children. Exactly. You know? and, exactly. Yeah. You know, and, um, you know, I did not know the difference between rewarding for performance and rewarding for effort. It, yeah. it didn't exist back then, you know, right. and, and I have to say, I made those same mistakes, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, I, if my kids played on a football game and they won, I bought them pizza, you know, right. I, I did those things, you know, um, but uh, one of our children uh, did have to work very hard academically. Um, they struggled with school. Um, right. And that child, I did remember actually praising their effort because I knew we would spend two hours a night yeah. at the kitchen table. There were tears. There were, mm -hmm. I mean, it was hard. Yeah. And you but know. yeah, I think in you investing the time or us investing the time, uh, let them know. But yeah, yeah. When it, and those are the kids who really sometimes excel more than others is because they've been knocked down a few times and they know it's not easy, you know? And yeah. Um, and then they say, well, if, if I want to be a part of this, I better step up my game. And they, and they, they dig deeper and, and find it. Um, and so our child now that, that we worked with that, that was younger like that, um, they are tough now, yeah. you know, determined, very determined. determined. when yeah. they put their mind to something, boy, oh boy, they, mm -hmm. yeah. they understand it's going to take effort. They right. realize that it's okay not to do it right the first time. Yeah, and I think another component that uh, I want to make sure we don't gloss over is the fact when we um, are praising uh, for the effort component, um, it really strengthens the relationship between the that parent and that child because the child is hearing that you're paying attention. Yes. Right? It's not just a flippant, way to go, good job. They, right. They know you're invested and you saw what they did and you're, and you're having that quick conversation about it. Um, so to speak as a conversation, but you're, you're, you're sharing a deeper essence of what they did. And, and they, they feel that they get that. You know, I guess one of the things I saw too, was there's so many parents, let's say are divorced. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it seems like sometimes when they're divorced, the parents feel so bad themselves about what's yeah. happened mm -hmm. that they don't, uh, parent. Yeah. And, and they're not building that resilience and grit in their children. Right. Because they have them for a limited time. Right. They don't want to upset them. And sometimes they want to be more of their friend yeah. than their parent. Yes, I see that. Well, too. Yeah. And you're worried about your time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't even bring that into the equation. But yeah, we, you know, if you're coming from where mom lives here, dad lives there and they're struggling or whatever it might be. Um as a parent, you want, you want that relationship with your child, you know, and yeah. then to know you don't have them for three days, you're going to probably be a little more overindulgent <laughs> right? And, and to the child's detriment, unfortunately, it it, you know, truly, right. We, we have to support these children so that they develop their internal self-confidence right. so they can figure out problem and problem solve on their own. Yeah. Right. right. And, and they can fall and, and, whether parent picks them up or not, I think the example you gave, Stacy, with your dad is incredible. 
right? <laughs> he let you live. He let you experiment. And but but if you needed help, he was there. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was incredible. You have to let the children fall. Let them yeah. try and and reward the effort of trying. You know, uh, in in there's one. Okay, so in corporate America, if you start a division mm -hmm. and it fails, almost every company cuts off the whole division. Right. Right. The whole the kit and caboodle. There's one Microsoft, Bill Gates. That if you start a division and it fails, he actually pays you a bonus. Oh, really? Instead of getting rid of you, he pays you. And, yeah. and so it incentivizes you because you tried. Yeah, we've heard that before. You yeah. stepped out on a limb, you took the risk. Like it that. didn't pay out, but he rewards your effort for trying, right? Yeah. And that's the same here. He rewards the effort. You gave it a, a, a try. And that's what we need to do better as parents is support them trying new things. Yes. It's okay that they didn't make it. Exactly. And, you know, I, yeah. If we can back up to the whole divorce thing and you were talking about when you have your child, um, it's interesting because when, when you live in the same house, as we know, opposites attract, right? So right. Matt certainly he parented differently than I did. Yeah. And so it's, it's when you're together, it's nice to have that, you know, um, that little give and pull. Um, and then, but when you're separate, when they're separated and the child is just with dad all weekend or vice versa, um, or whatever that dynamic is, um, now you're, they're just getting poured in with one style of parenting, which we yeah. know it's good to have a little of both, right? Because right. it balances things a little bit. And, um, I think that's a, a great thing to think about, like, and it's yeah, tough to be on the same page sometimes, you know, but that's, I know parents struggle with that too. Sure. Yeah. And they're going to work you, right? The children know, hey, if I want this, I better ask mom. Or if I want to do this, I better ask dad. Yeah. And, you know, and that only gets worse in a divorce situation. Yeah. You know? But even, even in a, in a regular situation, children are smart. They know how to manipulate you know, there are plenty of times when my kids were growing up, they knew that I would say yes to something or I would say no to something, but dad would might give in on certain things. And yeah. instead of asking me, they would go to their dad and ask him first for certain things, depending on wh what they were asking. So kids are smart and they, you know, so did you it have work to, for them? what did, did it work for them when they did that? Until I found out. And then I would get on dad's <laughs> case about it. Yeah. <laughs> See, I, yeah. We, Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say you have to have, you know, when when you when you're a married couple, you really have to have good communication. It's key mm -hmm. in order to and in order to be on the same page and to explain why you think you, you it should not be a certain way and why he thinks it should be and come right. to some type of happy medium where you both are satisfied with the way you're going to discipline or the way you're going to raise your child, but you know, you you're at, you're at um an area where you're both satisfied with the yes. reaction and then you make it very clear to the child. And then you, you explain to them, this is the way it's going to be. This is why it's going to be like that. Don't try to ask your mom or your dad for this and, and expect, you know, the other one to, you know, do this because it's not going to happen anymore. This is what's yeah. going to happen. I made it with my kids. I just made it real easy. Uh, I would say, what did mom say? <laughs> <laughs> I never said yes on my own. I just, <laughs> I, because to me, I was working. I was gone most of the time. Right. And Audra, the, the huge burden really rested on her shoulders. Yes. Mm -hmm. She knew the day to day. She knew yeah. if they were pulling their weight or they weren't or, the, you know. So yeah. when the kids, when I was there and they asked me, I just very simply said, what did mom say? <laughs> <laughs> And pretty soon they stop asking me. So, <laughs> Next it, little tip for some of you parents, right? It, it, it worked really well um, and truthfully kept me out of trouble. So, <laughs> right? Yeah. I want to I want to go back to one question though. When we were talking about sports, you made me think about something. You know, and I don't know how it is in other states, but I know in the tri-state area, um, you know, when, when kids play sports, a lot of the the coaches and the parents took it very seriously. They thought their kids were all going to be NBA players and they were yes. going to be in the NFL. 
And, you know, a lot of times if the kids weren't good enough, the coaches would put them on the sideline and wouldn't, wouldn't let them play as much. Or the parents, you know, would be yelling at the kids for missing a ball or not making a goal or whatever. And yeah. it really, I think it really dampened a lot of kids' self-esteem and a lot of kids, you know, didn't want to play after a while. And, um, you yeah. know, and when you have when you have kids involved in activities and, you know, you, you know, what's a good way, would you say, to handle a situation like that? Like, how should sure. parents, how should parents? You know, you know, coaches that are working with children react, you know, not everyone, you know, it's, it's a very small fragment that make it to, to the NFL and the MBNA, you know, that's like a, a less than a, a, a 0.03%, you know, so these kids are just doing it for fun. They're doing it to bond, make friends, learn, learn how to be, you know, a new activity and, and to excel. So, yes. you know, what is your expectations of how these these parents and these these coaches, people who are working with these children, you know, talk to these children? How do they react to these children? Because I, I saw a lot of things that I didn't like because I felt like right. they were being much too hard on these children. And, right. you know, they weren't giving them the encouragement. You know, sometimes they did really well and sometimes they didn't. But still, you know, I, yeah. I didn't, you know, to me, it was just a game. Let these kids have fun. You know, just, to me, that's how I thought about it. It. Mm -hmm. uh, we agree. I've had those discussions with coaches and parents. And so here is the philosophy that we adopted. Um, I and we believe that uh, any of the kids that are, uh, let's say, sixth grade and under, they should all enjoy it. They should all be given an equal time amount to play. Mm -hmm. You don't know where the next great athlete's going to come from. They might decide, I love basketball and I'm going to play it forever. Or they may try it and hate it and move on to baseball or track. You know, I think that all these coaches need to change how they react with all the kids that are sixth grade and under, right? Yes. Let all of them play. Let all of them have equal time. Yes. Courage that effort. Talk them up and showcase them when they yes. do something well. Because just like you pointed out, that one fraction of 1% of 0 0.001 that's actually going to make it to a college or, a, or an NBA or an NFL team are so low, right? And if you don't make it fun, they're not going to want to excel in it anyhow, right? you know? Yeah, I think we need to remember too, in um, most at that age group that you mentioned, most are volunteer coaches, right? They yes. Are. Mm -hmm. so, so you get the dad who's got a son or a daughter or mom who's got a son or daughter, and then they're like, okay, I'll do it, right? So they may not be, um, you know, experts at coaching. And then you have someone in the stands who is a little overzealous, <laughs> uh, you know, and so then that can get confrontational and just the the parent coach personality um, that relationship can be tough, let alone pulling the kids into this. And if the child's dad who's over, mom who's overzealous is in the stands and that kid's not a high performer. And then the coach is like, I'm just here to have a good time. I mean, you can see how it can just get messy. And yeah, and so, yeah it's not, not to say to stop participating because that's so amazing. But I think we all have to go step in with, um, a uh, little uh, clarity of what's really happening. So here, right <laughs> now, I I really wanted parents or or coaches. Once you hit about ninth grade, mm -hmm. that's kind of when I believe, and and I could be one hundred percent wrong, but that's kind of when the weeding out starts to happen in the physical sports, right? Right. Uh, because that that is when we're starting to really test aptitude. We're really mm -hmm. starting to see who can win, yeah. right, and mm -hmm. and play, and so that. But but until ninth grade, I think everyone should play, yeah. and I think everyone gets equal time, and I think everybody should be telling those children, "Hey, great job trying that, good effort," you know, and yeah. and those kind of things. And so that's it's. I think ninth grade is when you start <laughs> to separate who is really uh, because when you hit the junior year, when you hit the senior year that is when things are separating and then especially yeah. in college or other levels. So mm -hmm. to answer your question, that's where I separated and we did was in ninth grade. And I, 
I think it brings up a point too that I just recalled, like when when we were kids, and now obviously we're older. Um, you know, our parents dropped you off at practice, <laughs> and you went for it. Now parents yeah. are sitting at yeah. practices. Yeah, or, you know, yeah. we have we have a, a brother in law, and he would coach football, and he said when I went. You know, he's like, my, I walked across the field. I did my practice. I came home and parents were nowhere to be found. They were right. You know? And yeah. he said, so he took on the role as he got older to be like a coach, you know, yeah. and he said, you know, I would go to the field and he's like, and first thing, all these parents are sitting there watching me coach a practice, not even a game, yeah. you know? And so then they're, they can be a little over-involved, but it's a, it's a stand. It's, it is what it is nowadays. And, um, you know, because parents are scared that something's going to happen to their kids because we hear all these different things, you know? So a lot of it has changed, but um, yeah, I just think that was interesting that, uh, you know, how now the parents are there for everything. And yeah. that wasn't a thing. You had to fight your way through that, you know, right. <laughs> as a kid. And as a kid, yeah, you know, you have to earn your spot, so to speak, you know, and right. you don't put in the effort. And who was the real famous basketball player that everyone talks about that got cut um, oh, Michael Jordan. Was it Michael Jordan? I think it was Michael Jordan. I think. Yeah. I think. Don't quote me on it. And I'm with you. I'm. I don't quite have the right name, and that's why I was afraid to say. But no, I'm um, pretty confident. Uh, that but way. you know, who, whoever that individual was, they made a commitment in their mind. They got cut from the team. Yeah. They said, "I'm going to do everything I can to play this next season." And from what I understand, they practiced and practiced and practiced to make that happen. Right. And so that was that resilience, that yeah. was grit. They made that mental decision on their part um, and, well, and they made it happen. I'm sure when he went home, his parents would say, oh, buddy, I'm sorry. The parents probably said, well, you know what you gotta do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. He was like, You're right. And I'm like, he's not gonna get sympathy there, right? Back then he was like, right. well, he might've got a, I'm sorry to hear that, but how are you gonna fix that, right? It, yeah. was, it was just a different direction was given. Yeah. yeah. Cause he's how old is, how is he now? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. But but, but I thought that was a good story. Himself. Yeah. Oh, he did mm -hmm. for sure. You know. He so come back for sure. So just I guess what I would just share with listeners is is that I parented for performance without knowing any better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and when you read the studies and it shows that they have more motivation when you reward for effort. And their ultimate performance increases because they develop more resilience and grit. And that is a better way to do it. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that. Yeah. And so right. that's why it was so shocking. And we wanted to share that there is a better way. And, uh, you know, yeah. that, that's, that's, that's the, big, the biggest takeaway, I would say, is that yes. we want to, because it was a mistake we made. Um, it is. And, uh, you know, you try all different things. Um, but, uh, I know we did a little of both, but more and we more it was, yeah, just, Hey, great work. You right. Know? And if you could take a couple of, um, samples, you know, like emphasize the, the proper way to actually raise a child, the, the proper way that would actually help a child develop into a strong, you know, uh, outgoing individual who has resilience and has the determination to want to move yeah. forward and become better. Yes. What are some, what are some um, examples or maybe things you like to sure. emphasize to teach other parents? Well, one, I think you should do this Two, I yes. think you should do this. Maybe you can give a couple examples so they understand the right way to praise your child. Sure. So um, one of the ways that that we believe in praising the children is what's called showcasing them. OK, meaning, uh, hey, uh, John practiced doing his math homework at the kitchen tables for two hours last night. And you tell grandma, you tell grandpa or you tell a neighbor, even the siblings yeah. or a sibling. Mm -hmm. Right. And when they when the other ones hear that, you'll see that child light up. Yeah. That child will smile from ear to ear mm -hmm. because not only did you recognize the hard work they put forward, but you let somebody else know about it. Right. And that person can say to them, way to go, John. Yeah. I can't believe you spent two hours doing that uh, math homework. Right. Wonderful effort. Right. Mm -hmm. and so those are, that's one way is showcasing the effort that they've done and letting other people know about it. Right. Um, right. 
And then a second way is role playing, okay, with your children, as, as Audrey had pointed out. So you can say, you know, yes, John got an A on his math test, Sally, mm -hmm. but ask him, what did he have to do to get that? Right. Let, let John speak up and say, well, Sally, I had to work three hours a night or two hours a night, and it took me five days, and I did it. And then Sally's eyes also get real big, and she's like, I didn't know you had to do all that. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. You know, and so you're rewarding the effort that they put forth because you let them tell a sibling, right. this is what I had to do. Right. And mm -hmm. so I know those are two big ways yeah. that, that really help you convey that rewarding of the effort with the children. Yeah. And two thoughts I would share is um, one, like we had said, you know, recognize the effort. So you might do that by saying, wow, I saw you getting really frustrated there, but you yeah. stuck with it, you know, and that shows us that you've got the grit. So keep on going. Mm -hmm. um, just really identifying like, oh, I saw you trip three times, but you didn't give up. You got back up. Yeah. Right. So really uh, mirroring what you see, I think is a, a is a great piece to help um, parents know how to maybe get dig deeper into how to um, praise a little bit. And then also to remember that, um, you know, it's, it's fundamental to who the kids are and, and let them fail. I mean, it's okay. You got to think as right. a parent, what's the worst that can happen? I don't know how many times we had a trampoline, <laughs> and think, how many times. And of course we had three boys. So I was probably a little more like, oh, they'll be all right. But uh, how many times it might've fallen off the trampoline and yeah. I didn't, I mean, I could see what was happening and I saw they were okay, but I didn't rush over and said, oh my gosh, are you okay? Oh my God. You know, we all know yeah. when you do that with a baby, like, oh my gosh, are you okay? And now yeah. dramatic. So let them, if it, if the worst that can happen is they scrape a knee, if, right. if they're right out in traffic, obviously that's where you have to, you know, helicopter and you need to stop. Yeah. But yeah. Let's, let's let our kids trip. Let's let our kids make mistakes. Let's let our kids work their way out of a a situation where the kids maybe aren't being so nice to them, as long as it's not dangerous, exactly. you know, because they, they can't, they have to know they can stand on their own two feet when you're not there. Right. And if we're constantly res rescuing them, and if we're constantly there to catch them before they fall, th then they're not learning. Um, so those were the two pieces that I would add in, but yeah, really sure. mirror what you're seeing happening. And it's a little tricky to figure out how to do it first. But um, I think if you practice at it and we're always available to help with any um, information and, and we actually do have a, a, a guide we're putting together right now that we want to offer up on how to give good praise. So, so that oh, might good. be a good resource too. But, um, but yeah, I think, um, I think just parts and in peace and what we've shared might be helpful for them. Sure. And that's a great way to show how you really believe in your children. Yeah. They, they, your children want to know that you believe in them. Yeah. And that's so important. And um, and the second component is that you love them. You know, yeah. they they you know, um, I, I my parents were not good at sharing that message, <laughs> truthfully. Um, but uh, you know, I think when you equip your child with that that you believe in them and yeah. that you do love them, uh, even though they might fall, right? It's okay. Right. Um, and we're still going to care anyhow. Yeah, and every, uh, that's all. That's every parent listening. I know, no matter if your child's, a, you know, super success or they struggle, um, it doesn't mean we don't love them, right? right? And they have to know that we love them no matter what um, life comes and handle and how that works. But yeah, I think um, yeah, that's a key piece. I think that's great because you also mentioned some of the things that you shouldn't do, but maybe you can em emphasize one or two things that you shouldn't do. You know, because you, you mentioned a bunch of stuff and you I like the fact that you did mention some things that you shouldn't do, which is, you know, always rush to their rescue, let them fall, you know, let them learn, you know, um, you know, and sure. that that's very important. If you had to add one or two more things on the, the wrong way to kind of pray, you know, the, the wrong way to do it or go about it or the mm -hmm. certain behaviors you shouldn't emphasize, you know, you might be habit. It might be because you grew up in a certain environment. But what are one or two ways that you can think of off the top of your head that you shouldn't do when you're raising your child that can have a negative effect on their personality, behavior, or, you know, kind of harm them in their in their future growing up? Because things that little things could actually traumatize people and they might even not know that they're being traumatized. It yeah. might just, you know, of subconsciously 
it, it stays in the back of your head and it changes your behavior and mm -hmm. people don't even realize it. But what are a couple of things that you would say, don't do this? You know, from my opinion, I don't think you should do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Yes. So, so one is compare, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We don't, if, if, if you have two, three, four children, even if you are an only child, uh, it, I, I, there's a negative if you compare your child to another child in your household yes. or a, another child in someone else's household, right. that can be very detrimental um, because that person feels they're being judged yes. and it's easy for them to feel they're being judged unfairly. Yes. Uh, and, and so that can create a real negative consequence. Uh, we want to be more person centered. We want right. to lift them up, support that individual than compare. So one yeah. of the negatives is comparing. You you triggered something for me to think of. I didn't, I wasn't going to say this, but I would like to say it now is that um, uh, we had an experience where there was a family who <laughs> I've heard it said, you do not want to walk in front of them um, just because uh, and not have your act together because this family was known to be critical and judgmental of other people. Okay. And so within the confines of your own home, um, if someone screws up on, you know, even on TV or you heard somebody screwed up it, within your own home to help your children feel more secure yeah, um, and just be a good person is don't talk about other people's failures yes. in a negative way. Like don't, don't showcase that like, oh my yeah. God, what a goofball, you know, mm -hmm. because now your child is hearing this and making internally, they're making decisions on how they're, they're, oh my gosh, I don't ever want to do that because dad does not think that's cool. You yeah. know, and so then it creates a lot of unnecessary anxiety and stress, but yeah, we want to make sure that we keep ourselves in check with how we judge quote unquote other people. Um, so I, like I that. think that's an important piece. That too. Is. That's huge. Right. That's great. Now, where can people find your website? And also when is that guide going to be expected to come out? I would say in two weeks. So uh, for sure by end of February. Okay, that's great. I'm excited. Sure. I can't wait to see yeah. it. Now, where yeah. can people find you guys on the website? Sure. We um, are, the, the easiest name is uh, www.blackbeltbruce.com. Okay. And so it's a, a, a site that's designed to help parents have available character and leadership resources yeah. that they can use in their own home to right. strengthen not only their message of courtesy, their message of focus, their message of discipline and respect, uh, but but it's characters that reinforce that good message. Yeah, they're animated characters, super fun. Yeah. It's a it's a fun program. We love it. They have a great so, time. Yeah. So so that's one way they can reach out to us. And mm -hmm. if they had any questions for us, we the our martial arts students named our character as Black Belt Bruce. Okay. Mm. <laughs> and so that's our so if you emailed us at Bruce at Black Belt Bruce.com. We'd be happy to answer any questions that somebody might have or oh, share more information about our program. So that, that'd be a good way they could locate us. And are you on the social networks anywhere? We are a little bit. Um, we're not as good at it as we should be, but mm -hmm. yeah, Facebook, Insta. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can LinkedIn. I have uh, my information on there and we promote that because we really work with a lot of high performing parents to help their kids, you know, be successful. So that's oh, excellent. Uh, yeah, it's a good place to find us. Thank you. Sure. Oh, thank welcome. you. <laughs> this has been amazing. I thank you guys for your time. And I can't wait to hear you guys and the next topic you're going to talk about. I, you know, remember that they have their own podcast under our uh, under the complete uh, under I'm sorry, the the advisor with Stacey Chalemi. And they have their own podcast with their own URL, you'll find it and you can find it on any podcast um, network they have, you'll see that th their podcast there and you could just type in their name and it'll pop right up. And go. I'm very, very excited because you become a podcast part of our podcast community and you have such great information and great resources. And I'm so, I'm so glad that you guys have become a part of our team because you really help parents really see things from a different perspective. And in today's society, we hear such cross information and mm -hmm. I think people get confused on the right and wrong way to do things. 
and it's nice to hear different points of opinions and different different suggestions that they can incorporate in their lives and maybe if they're having struggling with certain issues they have great constructive ideas that they can incorporate in their own lives in their own family that could actually improve their life and improve their family life and actually make their children you know better leaders and and better people you know for the future to come so there thank you, you so much Thank you again. We really enjoy everything you do. And thank yeah. you for allowing us to participate. We really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. You guys have a great day. You too. Thank you. Thank you.